welcome back to our discussion of anxiety disorder. Um, this series has been a long um, series, but we continue to try as much as possible to um, discuss the chapter 15 and 16 of my book but we continue with the series from um, pages 124, um, we're going to 125, we will deliberate a little bit on depression because we've treated the anxiety disorders, the categories, the classifications, the different types of treatment and all that entails in um, anxiety disorders. And we've spoken and deliberated, discussed on stress, the differences between anxiety and fears and all that. So we've, we've covered quite a bit. So um, if you are watching this video right now, um, you can go back and then check on all the categories of anxiety disorders and then familiarize yourself with that so that you can help someone in the community if you pick on any signs so that they can be referred and have some support and help so depression today we're going to talk about it on page 125 of my book depression is a state of low mood and aversion to activity that can affect a person's thoughts behavior feelings and sense of well-being so as you know, when you are depressed, every single day, every individual go through that pendulum of depression, but we come out of it, you know, in seconds and all that. But as I we discussed in the um, previous videos, when it's persistent, when it's continuous, when it's excessive, when it's intrusive, when it lingers on for a longer period of time, over six months, then it means You've, you've, you've leaped into the clinical stage or the clinical state. So it becomes a problem that you need to sort out. So they're saying that it's a very low mood situation that is emotionally very aversive. So it means that depression is really not a good thing. But some, from time to time, every individual go through um we go through depression from time to time but it might not be clinical because there are so many things that happen during the day daily activities or during the year that you might not be happy about so sometimes you are dull you are low you are down you have low moods and you pick up from time to time so that is quite a normal thing but if it's intrusive if it's excessive if it is persistent, if it is prolonged after six months and it's still the same old intrusion, then it means that it's gone to the clinical stage that you need to go for support. So depressed people may feel sad, anxious, empty, hopeless, worried, helpless, worthless, guilty, irritable, hurt, or restless for no apparent reason. So, this is the definition that we're talking about in terms of the clinical depression. This is whereby you need a very professional support so that you wouldn't jump into the suicidal situation. That is the last stage that anybody wants to is the last thing that you want to even think about so it comes with irritability it comes with hurt it comes with restlessness you feel that you are worthless you feel guilty about so many things that are not even there it's like a mirage you see something there like water you get there and you see nothing mirage there's nothing but you are feeling it individually you are internalizing it and nobody understands you that is clinical that is a very difficult situation for people to understand and sometimes 
professionally is only those that have got experience that have dealt with patients for a very long number of years that really can understand and digest what the individuals tell us. They may lose interest in activities that once were pleasurable, experience loss of appetite or overeating, have problems concentrating, remembering details or making decisions, and may contemplate or attempt suicide. So this is the clinical stage. When you get to this state, then it means you need an admission. When you get to this stage, you need an admission. A section two has to be organized for you so that you go in for admission for 28 days assessment and treatment. And if after that 28 days you are still in that situation, they have to book you in for another section three, which is six months, three to six months with assessment and treatment because that is a stage whereby it becomes very critical. You can't sleep excessive, you know, insomnia, excessive sleeping, it, 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 it fluctuates. And that's when diagnoses are made. You can be diagnosed as a bipolar in that state. We haven't read there yet, but I'm just trying to, you know, alert that in this state, if you are assessed and evaluated and diagnosed, you might be diagnosed with bipolar because it's up and down. Your moods keep on fluctuating just like that. So you can have insomnia or excessive sleep. So you see, it's, it's, it's from A to Z. It swings from the extreme end to another extreme end. So insomnia, excessive sleeping, fatigue, loss of energy or aches, pains and digestive problems that are resistant to treatment may also be present. So you see, it's a very difficult situation because your mind is going through a whole lot. Your serotonin levels have come down. Your receptors have gotten shot of some of the chemicals that are supposed to be on an optimum level for your brain to be functional. All these levels have dropped. And as it drops, you can't even feel, you know, any organ that works properly in you. You can eat but not get filled or satisfied. You can have digestive problems because your, your, your brain is not functioning properly. And it's a brain that sends messages to all these organs to function well. So your brain is like a computer that is a human machine or a human sitting behind the computer and telling the computer what you do. So your brain is going to tell your digestive system that I've got rice in you, make sure you digest it and pass it on through the processes so that everything is going to be okay. But if the brain levels of the chemicals have dropped, it's not sending the right signals to your organs, to your digestive system to tell it that, hey, you know what, I've got rice there in the belly, make sure you grind it, make sure you digest it, make sure you finish and complete whatever you're supposed to do. It's not signaling, it's not sending that information there. So your digestive system is not really working properly because there should be a link, there should be a sensor, there should be a, a, a message that the neurons and the receptors are gonna send through that organ to tell the organ to do what it has to do, but it's not getting that message. So it's dormant. If the master is not at home, the servants play. So it means if the master, which is your brain, is not sending messages to your organ, digestive system to operate, the digestive system plays up. So you see how bad this depression is. When it's clinical, it's not a good thing. It distorts every function of your organs in your body. So, depressed mood is not necessarily a psychiatric disorder. 
It may be a normal reaction to certain life events that is normal, a symptom of medical conditions or a side effect of some drugs or medical treatment. Depressed mood is also a primary or associated feature of certain psychiatry syndromes such as clinical depression. So, it's not all depressive moods that are clinical as it is saying right here. Some might be due to a situation that you are reacting to. Maybe you have a sick mom or a sick mother or a sick friend or family or the death of you, you, are, you are bereaved in one way or the other, it can bring on depression. That's for a period of time. It's not going to be persistent. It's not going to be resistant. It's not going to be excessive. It's not going to be intrusive. So um, it wouldn't be termed as clinical or diagnosed, right? So there are psychiatric syndromes such as clinical depression that we know that is, is, is being diagnosed and that you go through the process of them checking if it is maybe some other affective disorder in terms of maybe psychotic disorders because when it's affective it brings in the psychosis attached to the depression that is bipolar that is a different aspect of it so let's let's talk about the causes and let's see how it goes because there's a whole lot of people that are depressed but not clinically depressed it is the life events that they go through that brings on the depression so it's for a period of time, a short period of time, and it goes away. It fades away. It doesn't go through the stage that it leaps into the clinical depression. So let's see what the causes are. Life events that I was saying. Life events and changes that may precipitate depressed mood include childbirth, menopause, financial difficulties and job problems, loss of a loved one, as I was saying, family member or friend, a natural disaster such as earthquakes, hurricanes and tornadoes, etc. Relationship troubles, separation, bereavement and catastrophic injuries that I was saying that in daily, in our daily endeavors, in our daily lives, and we are trying to make it work, certain things do happen that triggers depression so as it mentioned divorces disasters you know job losses financial difficulties financial constraints problems if your child is not doing well you can be depressed if your child is arrested or if your child have a problem or if you have any kind of major issue or life event that is not pleasant to yourself, it becomes a problem. And when it becomes a problem, you can go through depression for a limited um, period of time. But it wouldn't be termed as clinical depression. If you have an accident, you might go through depression for a while. It's normal. If you have a childbirth, because there are postnatal depression that women go through after childbirth. But it lingers on for a period of time and it, and it goes away. But some of them are not lucky. It, link, it becomes persistent, it becomes clinical and they are diagnosed with depression and they receive medication. Some of them go through CBT and still not okay. So they have to be um, given medication to make sure that they can have their proper sleep because insomnia also brings on different levels of physical ailment. So women can also go through childbirth and after childbirth they have post postnatal depression and that is a fact that happens but it's, it is, it's a short period of time. It's not a clinical depression. So it's a normal thing that people go through but when it becomes clinical depression then it means that it's been excessive, it's been intrusive, it's been persistent, it's been excessive, as I said, it's been very overwhelming and worrying, and it has lingered on for a number of months, over six months, then it becomes a problem. So let's see what medical treatments are there for depression, as we've already discussed. 
but we want to touch on, we want to, you know, hammer it over and over again in these episodes so that if you are there and you click and try to watch, you, you, you at least, you pick something that is going to resonate with your daily activities that you will remember, that you have flashbacks all the time. Because if we don't hammer this over and over again and you listen to the videos, you wouldn't get or get anything. But when those terms and words and those phrases, and those explanations are made over and over and over again, and as you listen over and over again throughout the whole series, you grasp something that you can use, a, a tool that you can use and help others as well to come out of it. So medical treatments. Certain medications are known to cause depressed mood in a significant number of patients. So which means that some of the individuals that are on everyday medication can also trigger depression. Some of the drugs cause. So it's, it's, it's quite dangerous when a drug causes depression because life events is causing depression whilst the drug that you are on it that is helping you to fight another physical ailment is causing depression so those that are going through that phase is very critical and we have compassion and mercy on you because you need support these include hepatitis c drug therapy and some drug used to treat high blood pressure such as beta blockers and recipients so it means that those women and men on beta blockers who are hypertensive and those hepatitis c drugs that are used to sort of um, act as a treatment regime for hepatitis c um, patients have the effect of being depressed the side effects some of the side effects are depression so if you are out there and there hasn't been any life event that has triggered anything like depression on your part and you are feeling depressed you can't sleep or you sleep excessively loss of appetite or you overeat or you have panic attacks or you feel worthless you feel useless and you start you know you, you, you are you're feeling tearful and all that if you're out there on any other on any medication like blood pressure, beta blockers medication, and you are feeling that depressed, then it means one of your medication is causing that. Please talk to your GP, go for a review, medication review, so that they can at least change that medication for you, so that you come out of that period of depression, because you don't want it to be clinical. You don't want to add more illness to your physical ailment already, because already you are on BP medication, so you don't need another medication that is going to interact with the BP medication, which is the um, clinical depression medication. You don't need that. So please, those patients, hepatitis C patients who are on that drug, make sure that your side effect is not depression. And those patients that are on beta blockers, the hypertensive patients, African whites, and Hispanics, Asian patients who are on blood pressure medication, please make sure that the beta blockers or the medication that you are on for your blood pressure does not cause depression. If you are experiencing symptoms of depression, please report it to your GP, to your doctor. Let them have it checked out for you so that they can review your medication, change it to another drug which obviously um, wouldn't give you that um, side effect. Non-psychiatric illnesses. Depressed mood can be the result of a number of infectious diseases, neurological conditions and psychological problems including hypoandrogenism, hypoandrogenism, in men, Addison's disease, Lyme disease, multiple sclerosis, chronic pain, stroke, diabetes, cancer, sleep apnea, and disturbed 
circadian rhythm. It is often one of the early symptoms of hypo hypothyroidism, reduced activity of the thyroid function for a discussion of non-psychiatric conditions that can cause depressed mood. So I've mentioned a number of diseases that can also bring symptoms of depression that will increase your depressive or depressed mood when you are in this number of you know you've got this number of um aforementioned diseases you can dive into depression because it is chronic and chronic illness if you don't accept if you don't go through the five stages of kubla ross the five stages of um grief that is denial acceptance bargaining depression and acceptance you wouldn't be able to deal with that chronic situation that you are in and therefore depression is going to take place if, and if depression takes place you are in a very critical situation because you will be diagnosed with depression and you'll be having an additional medication to your chronic medication disease medication as well so all these diseases that I've mentioned which are chronic and I don't want to even repeat it diabetes cancer sleep apnea and all that I don't want to repeat that because it's, it's quite an awful state when you are in and then you have your anxieties playing up to you know launch you into depression Jesus 